I think when it comes to this whole upstream, downstream hormone thing, people have taken this illustrative diagram far too seriously. Um, there is a diagram which shows that, you know, pregnenolone starts with cholesterol, pregnenolone, and then it goes across to progesterone and the corticoids and then down to the sex hormones. It's a diagram for explanation. It's not actually like a river that flows liquid down these, these streams, so to speak. Uh, does it make sense for me to have upper range testosterone, uh, 808 nanograms per deciliter and estradiol, 52, while my DHEA is in the gutter, 53 micrograms per deciliter. I'm 39, not on TRT and have a history of chronic fatigue. Also low libido, erectile dysfunction, penile insensitivity, stress and no muscle mass to speak of. I'm also deficient in vitamin D and my bilirubin and ALT are slightly elevated. Okay, so um, again, can't give personalized medical advice, but I can give you some things to look at. Anyone who's got elevation in Billy Rubin uh, needs to get a liver ultrasound unless they've previously had a liver ultrasound that has shown it to be benign. So if you have elevated uh, Billy Rubin and you don't have fatty liver disease, you have something called Gilbert syndrome. Shout out to Gil in the TRT group. Um, so that means that you, it looks like you have fatty liver, but you don't. But in the event that you also have elevated liver enzymes as well, I would bet a conservative amount of money that there is some fatty liver there. So I would be getting a liver ultrasound firstly to check for fatty liver disease. If you have fatty liver disease, I recommend watching my liver masterclass on YouTube, which is a free video, which I think in the description of that, there's also a download, uh, which has a fatty liver protocol in there. Choline and Ocetol is a good treatment for that together. Um, so I'd be looking at that first. Um, the vitamin D deficiency, go outside and get some sunlight. And if you can't do that, um, look at taking supplemental vitamin D. I've got a vitamin D lecture on this channel. Jeffrey Rudabush just did a great video on vitamin D on this channel. Both of them echo a very similar thing around dosing. Um, so get your levels up for your vitamin D. That is going to help you in, in more ways than one. I would argue that those two are likely not directly related. They could be indirectly related depending on how far back this goes. But again, I don't know. Um, but does it make sense for you to have low DHEA, like bottomed out and pretty damn good testosterone levels? Absolutely. I think when it comes to this whole upstream, downstream hormone thing, people have taken this illustrative diagram far too seriously. Um, there is a diagram which shows that, you know, pregnenolone starts with cholesterol, pregnenolone, and then it goes across to progesterone and the corticoids and then down to the sex hormones. It's a diagram for explanation. It's not actually like a river that flows liquid down these, these streams, so to speak. Um, and I think that that's been taken out of context a lot and a bit of, you know, parroting bro science has happened in that, in that field. We don't know how many pregnenolones are needed to make a DHEA to make a testosterone, for example. So um, that's led to all kinds of myths around pregnenolone steel, um, adrenal fatigue, so forth. But DHEA, while it is a precursor for your body to make testosterone primarily in the testicles, it's actually primarily produced in the adrenal glands, not in the testicles. So I think of DHEA, if I have to slap a label on it for the sake of labeling things, um, I would label it an adrenal hormone. So the things that you mentioned around the libido and particularly the penile insensitivity thing, again, for like, I think the third time in this video already, if you go and watch that symptoms of low DHEA and pregnenolone video, I specifically say like low penile sensitivity, inability to finish, but basically feeling like a lack of sensitivity, particularly in the glands of the penis. Um, that is a hallmark symptom of low DHEA. So yes, you absolutely may have low DHEA. And, and this is, this is why it's so important when guys are having symptoms of, you know, low testosterone that they go and get a comprehensive panel because, you know, lo and behold, like your low DHEA is causing many of the symptoms potentially that could be uh, caused by low testosterone. So. DHEA may not be as marketable or desirable um, as testosterone from a marketing standpoint, but it sounds like it's what your body needs. It doesn't cause suppression. It doesn't have a negative feedback loop. It's oral, like it's very easy to use. Um, 
But the thing that I would really strongly recommend for, for you listening is although if you're in the States, you can just buy DHEA at like Walmart or you can buy it on Amazon or whatever, still treat it like testosterone or thyroid. So see a practitioner who works with it, introduce a dose, get your bloods tested, titrate up based on your blood work and symptoms. Don't just blindly experiment with things and dosing that you get off the internet. Do it in a supervised fashion, work with a practitioner, because although these look like vitamin supplements and might come in the same bottle, um, they are very powerful hormones with very strong systemic effects. But get your vitamin D levels up, ideally from the sun. If that's not possible, take a supplement, check for fatty liver disease and clear that up. Um, and then look at uh, treating the DHEA deficiency.